Hey everybody, welcome to the 1947 Rise podcast, a podcast that helps India-born, US-trained Indians get integrated into the Indian technology ecosystem and inspires them to move back to India to build massive tech companies and or help enable the tech ecosystem. We do this by interviewing India-born, US-trained Indians who have moved back to India and built massive tech companies themselves and or helped enable the tech ecosystem. Sandeep, I'm excited to have you. Thank you, Shiva. I'm actually equally as excited. Let's dive right into it. Uh, would love to get deeper, you know, your, your background, your journey. Uh, growing up in Chandigarh and then you know, most of your years were in small towns in uh, Haryana. And, and then you ended up moving uh, to U.S., you know, becoming one of the uh, top uh, analysts uh, at Wall Street, came back, you know, built uh, two uh, unicorns. Uh, so would love to get, you know, all the insights into it. Absolutely. Shiva, thank you for having me. So as you already pointed out, I was born and raised in Chandigarh. But when I was four year old, my father, who served uh, in state government of Haryana for three and a half decades, uh, decided to take his kids along when he got posted in a smaller town. And uh, from seeing the uh, farm first time to a cow first time, uh, I, I, I embarked on a countryside journey with, uh, and I was the youngest of the four siblings, highly pampered. Uh, two sister, one brother, so almost I can say two fathers and three mothers. So I was highly, highly pampered. Just grew up. Studies was never on my horizon. Um, spent three years there. Then my father got posted to another small place in Kalka, just a last city in Haryana before Himachal Pradesh. Uh, and then to Karnal and then to Fatehabad, then back to Karnal. So that's how pretty much from the age of fa- four, until 22, I ended up spending a lot of time here. Obviously, every year my summer would be in Chandigarh, where all of my extended families live, lived. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how, you know, and so I ended up doing my BCom uh, from Karnal. Uh, and uh, my elder brother, who was a family hero, very successful entrepreneur, actually, he was a chartered accountant. So that was a reason for me to do BCom because it was very clear, non-negotiable, from my father's side that I should be chartered accountant uh, because he never saw someone becoming that successful uh, in one single generation or the next generation. So I did BCom. I I was an average student. Uh, I had a, I know Shiva, you are a national level sports person. So I actually did play cricket and badminton at a district and state level. And I used to be literally a full-time sports person until I did my undergrad. Studies was never a focus. And after that, I moved, uh, I shifted to Chandigarh, started pursuing my chartered accountancy. And I must say, I hated it. I have all respect for chartered accountant and accounting as a career, but I it was not for me, right? And then my mother noticed that I was not as happy as I was. So she said, what's going on? And I said, I don't like what I do. She spoke to her elder brother, who was a senior IRS officer in Mumbai, and they sent me there for a preparation for a entrance exam for doing a master's. I I did that. I could I was misfit in Mumbai because all the people were from Saint Xavier and all the elite schools, and I had uh, too much of Haryana baggage. Uh, in a hindsight, I would say I did not realize that it was an asset rather than a liability. But that time I was very introvert, very shy, very less command on English in Mumbai. And I could not survive there. I came back, but did not pursue what I wanted to do. Did the same preparation for entrance exam in Chandigarh and finally ended up getting admission in Indore for my master's. So I spent two years there. There, I really first time academically in terms of unleashing my potential, in terms of flexing my muscles, in terms of maybe becoming more extrovert, all that started happening. I was among the top student there. It, Indore was good for me um, and spent a few years there. 
uh, during uh, uh, you know during my studies i ended up doing summer internship with a joint venture of kotak mahindra and goldman sachs in mumbai for first time a good exposure of a multinational type of culture came back to actually after my masters came back to india could not uh, uh, you know started an investment book bank, banking boutique firm along with my brother rather than accepting a job in mumbai so i worked there for three and a half years i was way ahead of my time in terms of working on some of the assignments which i did not realize will become big industries in coming years but during those assignments i happened to work with world bank asian development bank couple of other foreign banks i got very fascinated by what does it take to work in us and so i thought i want to go to us and during my time uh, shiva i come from a generation where a lot of indians would build their career in going to us because india did not offer as many career options as it offer now in in early or mid 90s so i i i wrote an entrance exam went got admitted into uh, you know washington university in st louis in midwest and went to us and that time dot com boom was at its peak and uh, and i was always you know i think even the three and a half years running a family owned boutique investing investment banking firm trained me to look for new opportunities and how to harness them maybe in fact if I, even i would say when i went from chandigarh to the smallest village perhaps that training was happening how to how to come to a new place how to make a meaningful sense how to make yourself relevant so while i was in a business school fresh for america fresh for as a student did not have any silicon valley in india at that time but i was still started making some meaningful sense for example applied for a business case competition with the hope of winning 5000 dollar and some exposure with the internet industry became a teaching assistant with my professor of marketing and wrote the first ever internet marketing course for a graduate studies for my university went to silicon valley found an internship uh, with schwab.com and one startup funded by sabir bhatia who was a founder of hotmail one of the first email service ever so that all started bringing me close to the internet and i knew that i want to be part of the technology industry i just absolutely loved so after my completion of my mba in st louis i already had a job with schwab where i did my internship so i came back uh, started my job 5 days before 911 and dot com bust was already starting to happen right uh, and um, all these companies like yahoo and aol from extremely sexy company were becoming miserable companies uh, and that time i started my job schwab had a 26000 employees and the way economy was melting down real time i had never experienced something like that so i was very very nervous i was on a student visa converting into a working visa so every day i used to check what is the price of a ticket to go back to new delhi uh, right and but how much time it will take for me to sell my car uh, and household items if i lose my job that was the beginning of my career uh and probably first example of suffering from mild anxiety uh, but you know i was lucky you know schwab went from 26000 to 12000 employees somehow they never fired me everyone who hired me my mentor my guide my boss my super boss all were gone but i was there then what happened uh, shiva by the way by the time i had gone to us as a student i was already married for one and a half month i had met my that time spouse my ex wife in indore while studying so my ex wife also graduated from the same university for mba but economy was already very very bad it was 2002 really bad economy so she took a job in seattle now we uh, you know uh, we were we became parent first time in 2003 and and then we had to decide we had to decide whether she would move back to san francisco or i'll go to seattle and i told her that i'll go come to seattle only if i find a job in microsoft otherwise you'll have to come back to san francisco and one day i went to microsoft web uh, website career website i had heard they receive 3 to 5000 resume per day i still tried my luck applied for a job which i really liked to my surprise next day morning i got a call from a recruiter wrong story short 3 3 weeks later i had a job offer from microsoft for the job i really liked and i moved to i left schwab to move to san uh, to seattle so that we can my wife and i don't no longer have a long long distance relationship and i found a job with microsoft one of the best technology company and the kind of job i really liked i worked there for 2 years and during that time 
lot of my friends from Wall Street started telling me that Sandeep, the kind of work you do at Wall Street, sorry, at Microsoft is actually very, very valuable on Wall Street. And this is a time when Wall Street had started heating up again after the dot-com boom burst. So I ended up throwing my hat in the ring and got a couple of places, job offer to become an associate analyst for the software team because I was at Microsoft. And one job I found at Citigroup for an internet analyst. I was about to say no to that job, thinking that Microsoft is a software company, not an internet company. But one wise man who later on became one of the first angel investors in shop clues told me that, Sandeep, you are you know as much internet and than anyone else and microsoft at microsoft you it you know it still brings you very closer to microsoft while nobody was giving credit for microsoft running a msn wisely so and he, and anyhow, anyhow shiva i ended up joining a, a city group as an associate analyst with a new analyst my boss as a new analyst came to city group it was a big platform city group was among the most elite firm for research Within first year, we actually cracked the code big time and became the number one internet research analyst team in, in all America ranking. And then we did that in second year. After two years, right, I started actually getting a lot of inbound interest from other firms who said you are ready from an associate analyst to a full analyst, like a senior analyst. Uh, and I ended up joining Oppenheimer, filled the same job, which uh, Henry Blodgett, the famous internet analyst held it at Oppenheimer before. So I filled that big shoe, became an internet analyst. Eight months later, Oppenheimer ended up joining, join, uh, acquiring a company called CIBC World Market, which turned out to be a reverse merger. I was excited only for a few days before I realized that it was a reverse merger and CIBC guys are going to call a shot. And very soon I realized that I was a stepchild uh, because they also had uh, their own internet analyst and they actually fired me three months after the acquisition. I think I was a fame, I was good analyst. They probably got a lot of calls from a lot of hedge funds and mutual funds that it's not a good decision. So they actually rehired me. They called me and they said, we made a mistake, Sandeep, can you come back? They had not paid my bonus yet. I had already spent nine months into the platform and you know we made our living primarily from bonuses. So I went back. I went back, I spent next four months, I got my bonus, but I knew I was not set up for success there. So I, the, there was a British firm called Colin Seward. They were building the career, they were building their new practice in US. They had heard, uh, by then I had heard, uh, earned a good name, uh, Shiva, as an internet analyst. So they hired me as a main internet analyst, literally gave me a free charge of cover any stock. So I became the first ever internet analyst on Wall Street who also decided to cover research coverage on Microsoft because the main thesis was Google is a 800 pound gorilla for internet sector, but Microsoft is their still competitor. There's also some kind of convergence happening between client computing and cloud, right? It was all early stage. Anyhow, I spent next two years with that platform, one year more with another boutique firm. And during that time, I was among the top ranked internet analyst uh, by Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Financial Times, etc a lot of name, had a two and a half thousand clients, and I did good quality, high fundamental research, covering companies like Google, Yahoo, Amazon, Expedia, Priceline, Netflix, Microsoft, etc. Then what happened, uh, uh, Shiva, there was a big change in my life. What happened, I saw, make my trip, a very small, tiny company in 2010, filed uh, from India an IPO for NASDAQ. I, I used to cover, I was a mainstream analyst, I was a pretty much as, as American by then than any other American analyst covering internet companies. But because I was Indian born, I had an Indian heritage, I thought, how about I provide I start covering research coverage for Make My Trip, which will bring closer to me in terms of what is happening in India. So I started, uh, you know, I came to India, met Deep Khara, met a few of other internet companies, just wanted, I, I wanted to, I always had a desire to write uh, you know, a report very similar to how Mary Meeker used to write a report in 1994, 95, 96. I, as a student and be a student, I used to be a big fan of her work. So I got an opportunity to write first ever report on India internet by a mainstream Wall Street analyst. But, you know, but I did not realize while writing that report, I started drinking that Kool-Aid 
and I was about to publish a report for Make My Trip. I was in Delhi, took a flight back to San Francisco for my home. On the way, I thought, if whatever I'm writing is going to be true, then why I'm only writing a research report, why I cannot create underline asset. And then I said, e-commerce is a 17 year old industry globally, but, but for all practical purpose, it's new. And there's no marketplace. In my view, the Walmart of India is not going to be Walmart Corporation. It's going to be an online company. And that online company is going to be a marketplace rather than inventory led model. With that, I decided that I will launch a marketplace for India first time and it became shop clues. And uh, I ended up doing a moonlighting, you know, realized that I, as it is, I had to be at office as a Wall Street analyst based out of San Francisco. I had to be in office at 4.30 in the morning, right? So I already used to sleep three, four, five hour maximum. And that became lesser because I started spending so much more time on shop clues. More I peeled down the onion, more I realized that how many times before you die, you get an opportunity to create a category. To me, it's very similar. It sounded that the way Jeff Bezos saw Amazon opportunity in 94 to 97, Jack Ma saw the opportunity between 98 to 2001. I'm seeing it shop close exactly like that. So I resigned on Father's Day on 2011 from my full-time job of Wall Street, a million dollar package coming on TV three, two, three times per week, speaking with ba Maria, Maria Bharti Roma to any other, you know, top anchor. And first time after one and a half decades, nearly one and a half decades, took a one-way ticket to New Delhi. I had one VC giving me large check as an offer, but it, it did not convert into actual money or actual round. So I ended up raising $1.95 million from 15 of my friends, came to India, started Shop Clues. In its fourth year of operation, we became a billion dollar company. For that time, fifth unicorn ever in India and fastest to become unicorn. Uh, and then I had another very big twist in my life, ran to, into a legal trouble, happy to go in detail, which derailed me. I had to stay in USA for 13 months. I came back, I had to step down from Shop Clues Literally, I had to start in 2014 mid from scratch. And that's when Droom came into being. I was already happy that Shop Clues has arrived, but it was taken away from me because of a personal trouble, legal trouble I was into. Then I started Droom. And a few years later, I was able to convert into a, a billion dollar company. And on the way, you know, obviously, a couple of, couple of them are, uh, you can say, headline big uh, ups and downs. But, you know, I had my own share of learning mistakes and ups and downs. And here I am. And unless we make series of stupid mistakes or get unlucky, Droom should be listed on NASDAQ either end of this year or sometime next year. You're the man with so many ups and downs. And I would say, I think, uh, you know, the measurement of or how do you define someone is, is not about getting the success, but it's more about falling and getting back up. Right. And even you wrote a book around it, falling again and rise again. And uh, Sandeep, where, so you moved back, you know, in 2010, 2011, and now we are 2021. How do you think the ecosystem has evolved over the years? When, how was it like in the beginning and where are we today? Absolutely. So, so Shiva, look, my whole bet was actually around this ecosystem in 2010 while doing a research report on Make My Trip and a Wall Street analyst coming to visiting India. I had a thesis that India is where China was in 2004 and 5, and maybe USA was in 97, 98. That was my thesis. And my thesis was that by 2015, 17, India will produce lot of internet companies, new age companies. So, so let me just compare and contrast the year I came here. So it's been now next month, I actually complete 10 years in India. So when I came, India had 80 million internet users, 2 million of them bought something online, right? There were probably half dozen VCs, right? It was very clear list of, let's say, SAP partner, Kanan, um, Excel, Nexus, Helion, and Sequoia. 
like I'm, I'm missing a few, but let's say these are the half dozen. They were very famous angel investors, but primarily Rajan Anandan from Google to Sunil Kalra and a few more, right? There were six, seven companies who had raised more than 10 million. One was Flipkart, one was Fashion and You, right? And a couple of more, right? Yes, Tiger was also, by the way, that time was in was active and was considered to be highly regarded and respected investor, right? All I wanted to say is 80 million internet users, 2 million online shoppers, half dozen to one dozen VCs, 25 angel investors. You would not find most of the people you are hiring will not have internet company on their resume before, right? That was the ecosystem. And the, let's say the value of all the public and private new age companies was 2 billion. And that included Nokri.com, Make My Trip, uh, and Flipkart too. So, but if you look at today, we are talking about 850 million internet users, right? Maybe 150 to 200 venture capital firms, maybe 250,000 individual investors who are willing to invest. And for them, investing in a company as an angel is not something which is exotic anymore, right? Um, and uh, there are 200 million plus people who buy something as opposed to 2 million 10 years back. And I would guess the public and pu the value of all the public and private companies would be close to 180 billion. So it has gone from 2, two, two billion to 180 billion, right? And so, so, you know, this is, and then not even once government will acknowledge presence of new age, new age economy or digital economy or startup of entrepreneur, right? Uh, I mean, in India for, for hundreds of years, it was always considered big is beautiful and startup are considered to be like fail, right? There was a taboo around failure. People would not know much about what does it take to do work in a startup. And even if someone figured out that it's exciting life to work in a startup, they will have a lot of peer pressure, girlfriend pressure, boyfriend pressure, future in-laws pressure, shadi.com profile pressure, and they will walk away from that. All that has changed, right? It is now obviously... All has changed. And, and Shiva, I wanted to add a context. Keep in mind what we have seen in last 10 years. That is what US saw from 1955 onwards. It was 1955 when Hewlett and Packard was coming up. It was Xerox coming up. Tom Perkins was creating Kleiner Perkins. So that country has a 70 years of jumpstart what we have experienced in last 10 years. So if India is precursor Sorry, if U.S. is precursor to what can happen in India and China is precursor to what can happen in India, we are still in a nine inning game, maybe just completed two inning. So if I extrapolate, I think India could create half a trillion dollar new wealth by 2025 and a one trillion dollar new wealth uh, by 2030, if not more. I mean, when I came in 2011, you know, someone would be saying that Sanip is uh, smoking guns saying that it could be half a trillion dollar a decade from now, right? Or a 15 years from now. But you think about it, most of the new billionaires are the one who born, who were born in a typical middle-class family, not with a silver spoon in their mouth, had education as emphasis, but decided to challenge the status quo and do something on their own. And it has been, it has been fairly rewarding. You've given a fantastic overview. You're right. You know, if, if uh, I think the market cap of tech companies in India today is you know around uh, 200 billion dollars, and and if you look at one company in the US or you know maybe uh, Facebook or Alibaba, uh, you know they're worth more than two two billion dollars. We got a lot of the things right. Uh, we have the talent. We have uh, capital. We we have internet penetration. We have smartphone penetration. I think what's one thing that's still missing is the government support. And then you touched on it a uh, you know, little bit. So would like to dig deeper into how do you think uh, we can get to the next level? You said we are in the, into the second inning out of nine. How can we get to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Yeah, no, absolutely, Shiva. I think government has, a, you know, we, the entrepreneur does not want too much of handholding by government. And if I want to say cynically, I can say the best thing government can do is 
not to do anything for us stay away from us the and uh, you know the re, the uh, rebel rebels and disruptors and innovators need government only in a very limited manner right sorry to say this way but if you are going to watch a cricket match and you see 20000 cops i don't think you will feel secure that there are 20000 cops you will in fact feel nervous that what is wrong today that there are 20000 cops same way if you see government in everything too much it's probably not a good idea for our innovation and disruptions right but government still can do so much to for country to leap frog from sighting inning to how you mentioned third fourth fifth so num- for example they can make sure they keep a tab on a cost of capital they can create multiple more sources we are, we don't need 200 500 billion in new wealth right even a 1 billion dollar allocated by government can give birth to 20000 more entrepreneurs right second is i think they make company incorporation company winding down and annual filings as simple as click right third is they should just completely make it very clear that you don't need to be listed in india if as an indian incorporated company if you have an opportunity to list outside money coming in india and money coming coming money going out of india like a repatriation and repatriation should be very very simple in my view i think that every money earned by founders or employees or the investors from the new age company should have no capital gain right and you know if 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 the padam shri and padam vibhushan and by the way it's changing can go to an actor to a cricketer to 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 the scientist why not to a first generation young entrepreneur why do you need to be 50 year old um, and um, right and gray hair with with to 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 deserve that if you look at us in the last 300 years only 10000 people have lifted that economy and made it 28% of global gdp right so when you are seeing some people doing that you know right you will always find in every era a few people who are way ahead of their time they are probably two generation more evolved on a darwinian theory of evolution and they are to put their neck on a chip, chopping board to change the world if government can do little bit of cheer leading for them it will go long way you're absolutely right uh, with the analogy I, i would say you know the tech entrepreneurs in india should be celebrated i think it's a cultural thing where we can go from you know, get education get a government job to get a job at a private company to start a company and provide jobs right uh, i think india should be an entrepreneurial first nation and that comes from the culture that's again you know you gave amazing suggestions as well what government can do and uh, look you know there are few reasons uh, why people you know indians who are living abroad want to move back you know earlier it was uncertainty over visa uh, some don't feel like they belong there uh, some want to be close to their families and one thing that's new that's coming now is you know you can build a global company from india right so you know you moved back in 2011 and uh, it was a big swing it was a big risk uh, there weren't that many opportunities in india you just saw it you were ahead of your uh, you know time and if you were to move back to to india today what would you work on and what these people should really focus on you know it could be uh, you know the skill sets or the experiences they can optimize on and they come back and they can apply those things and it can absolutely so so shiva that's a great question i moved here but i must say two three of my friends who moved between 2006 to 2011 their experiences did help me to make a little bit more informed decision in last 10 years i have given back my bit or my contribution in terms of lot of my friends wanting to know that does does it make sense for me to move back to india right so i would i would like to touch this answer of mine in kind of three four bucket one is if, if you are moving please have a right reason to move i am sorry i am very strong in family values and i have a 100% respect to indian culture and what is our role as a family member in different stage as a 
we have aging parents a lot of siblings and many other responsibility culture and so on but i would really urge everyone to really have a rock solid reason why you want to move back and it should not be driven by point of time but it should be with steady state in mind right so second when you are moving back to india please know you cannot have your cherry and pick two so get used to more traffic on road law and order will have a lot of chaos and confusion you may not have a very clear blue sky and fresh oxygen every day available murphy law will be applied uh, in a higher way anything which can go wrong will go wrong india is inherently a different country versus us and most other industrialized countries so second thing i would say is really be more informed because someone who is very over confident right they actually get much bigger negative surprise so just know what you are getting into third thing i would say is you know please know that do not be always get seduced by a 1.35 billion population also normalize it in terms of technology adoption income level demographic household income and then have a much more realistic assessment of the market or the category you are going to take right and then also another thing i would say is uh, please plan your social and emotional infrastructure in advance especially if you are coming back as an entrepreneur like in my case i landed here in august 2011 and i'm not kidding next 18 months i ate drank hang around only with the people at shop clues i did not even know who was my next door neighbor i my parents started having a complaint that sandeep you were more accessible when you were in usa versus when you were in delhi and we are in chandigarh right my old friends hated me that we call you you don't even pick up the phone so my suggestion would be that you know especially you know don't expect a soft landing that's all i'm saying right and um, and just you know so build a mo- man- mental emotional and family and social infrastructure as well and don't underestimate the power of that these are the few things uh, shiva i uh, i would say i mean you know it's a, it's a it's a topic in itself and i can spend hours and hours talking about it but i would say first of all you know have a right reason to come to india second is know that india will if you things in india as inherently you cannot have what is available in industrialized country third is while lot of things on paper are very big number but when you when you normalize it with gdp per capita and income level adoption technology urbanization uh, you know that number may be actually small uh, fourth is please make sure you have a good social emotional and family infrastructure before you take a plunge because lot of things will go rough i i i totally agree with you and it's a super solid uh, framework to have in mind you got to you got to have you know the right why and and long term you know uh, thought process and and just swing it uh, sandeep what's money and success to you uh so uh, so uh, you know uh, shiva money is important but i have never ran after money blindly or in a greedy manner or by by uh, you know on the expense of you know giving up my family values or ethics or any compromise uh, i would be making right but uh, but success right i know uh, right uh, you have excelled a lot in the, in your prior life as a sportsman right i mean in sports you know you play to win so success is very important right so success is very important but one cannot be just saying i will ne- uh, you know but one should also learn how to handle failure and in fact knowing that failure will actually have higher number of learning lessons right so i think money in my view i have always seen as a by product but success is something i do care about but the biggest thing is i think for me making an impact changing an industry permanently or if you reach to a stage that i really want to do something 
I would never like to be in a situation where I where I would keep carrying a regret that why I did not do that. So, for example, at Shop Clues, I reached to a stage where I where I told to myself the regret of not doing Shop Clues will be bigger than anything I give up. Same way I reached to a similar stage at Room, right? So I think for me that stage, reaching that stage is more of a God blessing. And for me, that is more important. Uh, money, if you do a lot of things uh, right, it will come. And uh, I don't know, I'm not uh, yet saved billions of dollars. So I do not know beyond beyond a decent amount of money, what is the incremental happiness will you get with a significantly higher money? You know, we know you because of, you know, a person with a lot of ups and downs and, and just not giving up, right? You've been falling again and again and, 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 and you know, getting back uh, even faster. And what do your friends know you for at a personal level besides your work, besides? Yeah, see, uh, look, uh, I think uh, Shiva, uh, I think them saying things about me to you or to rest of the world is probably more authentic. Uh, but, you know, I think, yes, uh, I mean, if I look, you know, I'm now, I, I would say old enough to know a little bit things about me or how my friends view me. So I think, uh, you know, two, three things I would say. One, I absolutely come across something, someone who is very passionate. Second is uh, I'm a relationship person. I was 11 year old when I was in Fatehabad, a small city in Haryana, uh, that time not even a district. And, and you know, it's been three decades plus. I'm still in touch with most of my classmates. Many of them would avoid me, not because they were not close to me. They thought that Sandeep may not give a hoot to us anymore. He's a very successful man. But when we met them, when I met them, it was no different than how we were in our seventh grade and eighth grade in Fatehabad. So I think one is a relationship. Third is uh, Shiva, like, you know, when I use mentioned a few times, I did have a few times very low points in my life, like dealing with a high profile criminal legal case in USA, living there by myself, where me and my family even suspected that Sandeep even might commit suicide. Right? That time, many of my, my friends sticking to me like a rock, and when I asked them, why are you sticking to me like a rock? Because they said, this is what you did also uh, without realizing that you were, uh, we always knew that you would always be there if we were in trouble. Right. Uh, and then a lot of other things I would say is, uh, Shiva, I like, you know, sometimes I can be very intense. Right. But also, you know, I do prefer, you know, if I'm working very hard, I also like to have play, play very hard. So all of a sudden unannounced, uh, you know, golf, golf match, or a three days travel, you know, boys, boys trip to some place and so on. So, so that's how, you know, like, you know, little bit of, little bit of on the intense side, but still fun. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I think passion and relationship, uh, someone who plays a lot of emphasis on those things. On those things. Uh, Sandeep, thank you so much. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you for taking the time and doing this. No, absolutely, Shiva. Thank you for uh, having me. And, you know, um, I remember when I started my U.S. journey, someone who graduated from my business school said, I'm going back to India. And I could not believe that, hey, you just in inherited 300,000 in student loan and people give their arm and like to be in U.S. You're going back. But that time I had a, did not even have a faintest idea that in 2011, I would also move back. So I absolutely wish everyone who are thinking of coming back, I think in India is a new Wild West. India is a new place, Serville and Sacramento. India is new, where industrial, it's an epicenter of industrial revolution. And I would absolutely encourage every Indian to take a plunge. Keep in mind, there were 150,000 people who were looking for gold in Sacramento, but there was one thing common, everyone who found gold, they were in Sacramento. So if you are looking for a goal, please be in India. Couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, what an aspirational country uh, India has become. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Shiva. Great, 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 great uh, talking to you.